Welcome to the Crimson Engine. My name is Rubidium. I am here with cinematographer Jamie Trent. And we wanted to talk a little bit about, or I want to ask him a little bit about, does buying a camera or a camera package get you work as a cinematographer? A lot of, you know, ever since the Red One came out, the first Ari Alexa, was it 10 plus years ago? Mm -hmm. It's become this thing for DPs who want to really like grow their business and grow their reel to invest, you know, fifty thousand dollars and upwards into a camera system and when they're contacted by a producer who asks their rate they say this is my rate but i'm also i can also either hire you my gear or i can you know if, if it's a creative project that they really want like i said i can bring my camera for free so if you hire me for my rate i'll come with the stuff that i shoot with right right was that you well i was one of those guys that bought a red one mm -hmm. when it first came out. Investing in cameras in the beginning can go a, di a couple of different ways. Yes, it can it can help you because you've got to get you've got to get footage for your reel. That's yeah. the most important thing is to be able to show people what you've done. Yeah, it's the catch twenty two, isn't it? It's like it, you it can't really get is. work because you don't have any sh a reel, and you can't get a reel because you don't have any work. Right, right, and. But here's the conundrum. If you get stuck with producers that are only interested in you having gear and cameras, and then you're going to get pigeonholed, and that's all you're going to get. Hmm. Uh, as opposed to if you have if you have quality work and you can show what you've done, they want to hire you because you're a good cinematographer. Yeah, producers and directors kind of lack imagination in that sense. Like they want to see if they're shooting a horror that takes place in an abandoned steel factory, they want to hire a DP who has abandoned steel factory horror work on their reel. Yeah, I found that when you have a job that you know is going to be coming up, if you change your, like get, have different versions of your mm. reel. If you spend, you know, when you're starting out as a DP, people are, I mean, you look on Craigslist, people are looking for and offering their services at a couple hundred dollars, $500 a day at the, right, right. At the top end. Right. If you spend fifty thousand dollars on a camera package, you you work for years to pay that off. You know the Red One shot for, you know that camera was on sets for five or six years. Now you know the, I can't even keep up with how quickly the Reds change. Right, like there's yeah, no, DSMC exactly. two, and then there's a new one, and there's another one. It's like how the do Scarlet, you, the Raven, the yeah, Monstro, the, the Epic, like, the Weapon. How do you, you know, are we at a point now where the cameras change so quickly? And you, you know, uh, things that were once cutting edge are no longer cutting edge. Very, very, you know, a year later. Right. How do you? How can you? Even if you are getting work, how can you expect to pay that off? So, to answer your question, I, I think what I did was I went out and bought the latest and greatest, the new stuff when it came out. But then, as things progressed, and we went from five k to six k to eight k, mm -hmm. it was a little. I thought it was a little uh, overkill. So I actually stuck with 5K cameras. You can get a secondhand package now for around ten to $12,000. You're talking about like a red epic? Red yeah, like a, if, you, if you're gonna go down the red path. Hmm. Uh, I mean, even to get a classic uh, Alexa, there's, I've seen them selling for $12,000. Yeah. And again, they really are just a tool. Instead of spending, you know, 50 grand for everything, you can go in and get something for maybe $15,000 maximum. You're talking, you know, camera, body, cage, monitor, batteries, media. Batteries, cards, yeah, media. Yeah. So everything you need to shoot with except the lenses. And I mean that-, that Even the Rokinon lenses now are, you know, if you just want to get a couple of lenses from Rokinon, you can do that the, very, very- The EF Cine. Exa Rokinon, exactly. Yeah. I guess becoming a camera operator owner is is specializing, right? You're saying this is my camera, these are my lenses, this is what um, w what I really know how to get a good image out of. Mm -hmm. But as you open that door, others close, right? Like if you're gonna, regardless whether or not you can shoot on Alexa, Red, Canon, Sony, Panasonic, if you have that camera system and all of the stuff on your reel is based on that, then uh, that's what you're going to be known for, but that might not be a bad thing. Thing is, when we start out, we all start out at the bottom. Mm. There's no, no one ever picks up a camera and just is incredible. 
it just takes practice and time. Yeah. There's, there is no fast track or easy way. It's all about yeah. doing it, doing it. And like you said, if you're starting out, even if you're not, if you, even if you've been doing this for, for several years, Get a camera and just shoot. Shoot every week. Shoot as much as you can. And then like the, the C200 is like absolute value for money. It's one of the best, absolute best deals out there. All right, so one of the things I've seen w with the red epidemic has been, they go out and buy a camera and they don't use it. And they sell it a year later or 12 months later when six more have come out. The value is depreciated so much and they're advertising, oh, red, red XYZ, mm -hmm. 22 hours of, yeah, yeah, of yeah. run time, yeah. record time. Yeah. And I, I see it all the time, yet when you look at Alexas that are being sold and you look at the hours, it's like 2,500, 3,150. Yeah. So the difference is getting getting to use the camera. That I mean, that's why we buy it. Yeah. But a lot of people buy it thinking it's going to get them work. This is going to get me exactly. When it, when it doesn't, they don't use it, and then right. they take a hit on it. Doctors go to medical school, they go quarter million dollars into debt, but then they walk out into quarter million dollar jobs a year. So they'll pay that off no problem, right? Like okay, you you put a hundred thousand dollars into a you know a, an Alexa and Cook camera package. There's you not working into any kind of guarantee that you'll that someone will hire you. I think it's better to to start start with the you know the the ursa minis the c200s the um the sub or, or like you say the the secondhand raven just get your hands on a camera get shooting see if you enjoy it see if if you can produce images that people will pay for people buy a camera and then you know try and get work even when they don't have a reel by saying hey i'll I'll work at $100 a day, but I'll bring my camera as well. Like I basically, you're essentially becoming an investor in the project. You're paying, you're bringing your gear along that's, in order to do it. That's a dicey call. Uh, like any producer who's worth their grain in salt will know that if someone's offering that, they usually don't have experience. Yeah. They're usually doing it because they want to get experience. It's not a safe bet for your production. Yeah. You don't want to be hiring someone that has you know very little or no experience who's got something for free that wants to give it, you're gonna get what you pay for. I mean, just to sum up, I think what we both agree on is that it, you know, it's not so much buying a camera to get work, it's buying a camera to improve your reel and get experience as a DP if that's what you don't have and that you should start within your means, right? You should right, start right. in those sub $10,000 packages and then you should be always shooting with it. Maybe definitely um, like a secondhand system. Religiously. Yeah. Uh, also, one other thing is become friends with rental houses. Like the, re the lenses that I have here are from Evidence Cameras. And, you know, I spoke to, to Joel, the, the manager, and I told him what I was doing. That's a really great point because, um, you know, rental houses need to test lenses. They need stuff cleaned. They need, um, they need uh, you know, social media content. You know, they don't have time to go out and shoot that stuff. As right, a right. DP, you, we don't have, we have time, but not gear a lot of the time. Right. So like offering to, you know, find your local rental house and exchange gear for content for them is a huge, you know, way to move forward and, and get experience with stuff that you might not have access to. Briefly, what we have access today, the internet, YouTube, there's nothing you can't learn. Just Crimson look, Engine. <laughs> right. You go on, go on YouTube and yeah. like... This show, for instance, you, you learn so much, you know, great information. Thanks, Jamie. I appreciate that. <laughs> as opposed to, uh, you know, going to film school and 60000 a year in debt, 80000 year a year in debt. There are so many people that I've met who are just doing it by themselves. And yeah. they, they learn color grading online. They learn f photography, lighting, yeah. you know, all these things. So you're doing a great service. Thanks, man. Cool. Well done. Thanks for Jamie Trent. Uh, I'll link to him in the description. Um, we've got another video coming up with him next week.